you mentioned that Kubernetes is being used in AI, but not always in the way people expect. Can you explain how AI workloads are both similar to or different from the traditional Kubernetes use cases most teams are familiar with? We see Kubernetes as the underlying training workload, training orchestrator for these jobs, right? Uh, very famously, Run AI, which was purchased by NVIDIA, they rely on Kubernetes as the underlying training. And we, we've seen the same thing in public presentations by CoreWeave, et cetera. It, it is very much being used to manage the jobs that are going onto these systems. The thing that's different, though, is that at whether for training or inference, we really have a very different storage configuration because you have a lot of data to store. For training, you have to be able to save checkpoints. We have a different networking topology. And so in a traditional Kubernetes mindset, a very cloud-native mindset, all of the machines in a Kubernetes cluster are interchangeable. They're disposable. You just throw out one, you get another one, you don't care where it comes from, you're not very worried about its networking, its topology, or its storage. In AI workloads, and, and same as similar in the virtualization workload, by the way, you care about networking placement location very deeply. And so when you're dealing with these machines in a Kubernetes context, you have to provide the information so that that, mach that node in the cluster gets set up correctly, it gets wired back into the cluster, it gets tagged, and the information comes in appropriately so that the system comes up. You can't just deal with them as, as individual nodes. You can't just say, oh, I'm going to you know, ask for a new AI training node because this one failed. It is a dedicated cluster with a specific purpose. And you don't want them sitting idle waiting to be allocated in a cloud model. You need to build the whole cluster and then run the cluster. And then each node in that cluster is managed over the life cycle in that cluster. So a lot of the ways people think about infrastructure underneath Kubernetes in a very dynamic cloud pooled reservation model just doesn't apply in these, in, in these instances, right? In some ways, it's it's a simple math. The gear is way too expensive for you to have an idle pool of AI machines waiting to be allocated. But even if you did that, they wouldn't be networked correctly. And so what we see in this use case and also in the virtualization use case is that you're buying the infrastructure you need to run the cluster. And then you deploy the machines for that cluster. If you're going to update or patch a machine, you're going to basically do an in-place update or a swap, and then you have to be able to do that reset. So all of these pieces fit together more in a sort of a more traditional cluster, you know, infrastructure mentality than you might get if you were thinking of the way we use Kubernetes in cloud infrastructure. 